In this video, you'll be shown how to write electron configurations using an energy level diagram. Here's a diagram which shows the relative energy levels of various atomic orbitals in atoms with more than one electron. These are also called polyelectronic atoms. There's a definite set of rules which we can use to determine how electrons in various atoms occupy these orbitals. The electron arrangement in orbitals is shown in the atom's electron configuration. The first rule is that each orbital, which is represented by a single rectangle on this diagram, can hold a maximum of two electrons. The second rule is that orbitals are filled up in order of energy, with the lower energy orbitals being filled first. We'll see better how this works when we do some actual examples. The third rule states that when electrons are being added to a set of orbitals at the same energy, for example the group of the three 2p orbitals, as they are added, new electrons will enter a separate orbital before they start pairing up. Again, how this works will become more evident as we show examples. We'll start by finding the configuration for the simplest element, hydrogen. We locate hydrogen on the periodic table. Its atomic number 1 means that a neutral atom of hydrogen contains one electron. In our diagram, an electron is represented by a vertical arrow. Hydrogen's single electron occupies the lowest energy orbital, the 1s. So for the configuration, we write 1s here. To show that there is one electron in the 1s orbital, we write 1 as a superscript on the s like this. So 1s1 means there is one electron in the 1s orbital. Just a little point here, the electron configurations we're doing here always assume that electrons occupy the lowest energy orbitals first. These configurations are called ground state configurations. So the ground state electron configuration of hydrogen is 1s1, as shown here. Now we'll move to helium, whose atomic number 2 means that a neutral helium atom has two electrons. We add the first electron to the 1s orbital. Because each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons, there's still room for one more electron in the 1s orbital. So we add the second electron to the 1s orbital like this. Notice that when there are two electrons in the same orbital, the arrow for one points up and the arrow for the other points down. This is the convention chemists use to depict electrons in orbitals. It's meant to indicate that the two electrons in the same orbital have opposite spins. Electron spin is a concept covered in higher level chemistry courses. A 2 is written as a superscript on the s to indicate there are two electrons in the 1s orbital. So the ground state configuration of helium is 1s2. From now on, when we say configuration, we automatically mean the ground state configuration. Let's do lithium. Its atomic number 3 means it has three electrons. The first two electrons go into the 1s orbital, but there's only room for two electrons in each orbital. So lithium's third electron goes into the next lowest energy orbital, the 2s. Because there's one electron in the 2s orbital, we write a 1 here. So the configuration of lithium is 1s2, 2s1. Now we'll skip ahead a bit to the element carbon. Its atomic number 6 means it has 6 electrons. The first two electrons go into the 1s orbital and the next two go into the 2s orbital. That takes care of four of carbon's total of six electrons. The fifth electron goes into the one of the 2p orbitals. The three 2p orbitals are sometimes called 2px, 2py, and 2pz. So we can say that the electron is going into a 2px orbital. The second electron goes into the next empty 2p orbital, sometimes called the 2py. Remember, rule number three states that when electrons are filling a set of orbitals with equal energy, that new electrons will occupy single empty orbitals first before they start pairing up. A good analogy here is strangers sitting on a bus with three double seats together. People will usually sit separately as long as there are empty seats before they start pairing up. So carbon's configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Now we'll move up one element to nitrogen, which is seven electrons. The first two electrons go into the 1s orbital, and the next two go into the 2s orbital. There are three more to add. The fifth electron 
goes into the first 2p orbital, the 2px, and the 6th electron goes into the next empty 2p orbital, the 2py, and the 7th electron goes into the third 2p orbital, the 2pz. Notice again how this follows rule number 3. The electrons filling orbitals with the same energy enter empty orbitals separately before pairing up. In later chemistry courses, we'll find that this is called Hund's rule. Single electrons in orbitals are called unpaired electrons. You can see that a nitrogen atom has three unpaired electrons. Unpaired electrons are important in forming covalent bonds, which we'll examine in a later section of this course. The electron configuration of nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Now we'll move on to the next element, oxygen. A neutral atom of oxygen has eight electrons. The first two go into the 1s orbital, the next two go into the 2s, and the fifth electron enters the 2px orbital, the sixth electron the 2py, and the seventh electron the 2pz. And the eighth electron pairs up with the electron in the 2px. Remember, each single orbital holds a maximum of two electrons. So the electron configuration of oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. The next element is fluorine, which has nine electrons in a neutral atom. The first two enter the 1s, the next two the 2s, then the 2px, the 2py, and the 2pz. That accounts for seven electrons so far, so we need to add two more. The eighth electron pairs up with the one in the 2px, and the ninth pairs up with the one in the 2py. So there's a total of five electrons in the 2p orbitals. And the electron configuration of fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Note that a fluorine atom would need to gain one electron to have a completely filled set of 2p orbitals. You might recall that a neutral fluorine atom readily gains one electron to form an F- ion, or fluoride ion. We see that the electron configurations can often be used to explain many properties of elements. Now we'll do neon, element number 10. A neutral atom of neon has 10 electrons. We put the first two in the 1s, the next two in the 2s. That takes care of four electrons so far, which means we have six more to add. We add these six electrons to the three 2p orbitals as shown. Notice that in neon, all occupied groups of orbitals are completely filled. This is a very stable arrangement, and neon is a noble gas. So neon is said to have noble gas stability. As we'll see later, other atoms tend to gain, lose, or share electrons in order to achieve noble gas stability. Notice neon is at the end of the second period of the periodic table. Now we'll write the configuration for element number 11, sodium. It has 11 electrons. The first two enter the 1s orbital, the next two the 2s, and the next six the three 2p orbitals. That accounts for 10 electrons. We still have one more to add. Sodium's 11th electron goes into the next lowest energy level, the 3s. So sodium's configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. This video is continued on part 2.